G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at one of the planes that has pained the War Thunder community and the War Thunder game for basically ever since it was introduced, and not because it is particularly competitive, but rather because of the opposite. This is the Sea Venom, and this is probably one of the most infamously bad planes in the entire game, but now it's been put down to 7.7. It's been at 7.7 .7 for a little while, uh, and with the recent opening up of the 8.7 to 9.7 battle rating ranges with the uh, very abrupt and odd, well not odd, but rather welcomed exit of the Harrier from uh, 9.7, it's sort of opened up 8.7, and as a result, 7.7 sees a lot fewer 8.7 games nowadays. Obviously, this is probably going to change in the future because this isn't a hard lock as such. It's a sort of soft, uh, constant down tiers. But I've basically not had a down tier in the few days that I was playing this plane recording footage. The Sea Venom is definitely a 7.7 or 7.3 worthy jet. It is in no way, shape or form competitive at 8.7. But my god, is it a load of fun when you get a down tier. The Sea Venom is actually fairly competitive and you just sort of have to take your time with the plane. It's not like you can go in and get a bunch of kills and then just sort of enjoy the, the carnage. You do have to play yourself fairly measured. But when you do, you honestly get a sort of match that is really, really enjoyable. This plane is probably one of the planes that uh, a lot of people will actively avoid just because it has had a fairly turbulent past being so garbage and all. But honestly, I would give it another go if you are sort of thinking this way. Honestly, oh, I, I find the Sea Venom kind of an interesting theory. I don't, on, I genuinely don't know why de Havilland would do, a, or would make a plane like this. If you, in theory, had a plane that was good because of it, because of its lightweight basically, because it was good at maneuvering, uh, but was very lightweight, I don't understand why you would strengthen the landing gear, add an extra uh, like person in the cabin, and then throw a radar in there and consider it to be at the same or similar level of performance. The Sea Venom is definitely a heavy bastard. When she gets to speed, she does manage to keep it fairly well, and she still does retain some of that turning capability, but overall the Sea Venom is definitely not like the Venom. I would say that it is more akin to a very fat vampire. It sort of performs uh, similarly, although it does have a higher top speed, and you can and will see that higher top speed. I consider this plane to be very similar to the F-84G, considering that uh, it, it is, you know, not particularly well accelerating. It does retain energy fairly well, but the difference is that it turns extremely well, compared to the uh, F-84G at least. The F-84G is a little bit into that energy fighter territory, and I would put the Sea Venom as a sort of equivalent, or, you know, like a, a good competitor, a good head-to-head -head with the uh, with the Sea Venom, just because of its ability to turn. Now, a lot of you have been watching my content and commenting and, and liking and all of that stuff, and I sincerely appreciate that. I have had, I reckon, 3,000 comments in the last week to read. I apologize if I cannot read them all, and... Honestly, the support that has come through with the channel, I've gotten days where I've had 100,000 views across all of my videos over two days. That's 50,000 views a day almost. I am absolutely blown away. I, I can't believe that the channel is sort of picking up this much traction. I'm going to try and carry that on for as long as I can, but just uh, sort of be aware that this can't go on forever. At one point or another, I'm going to first of all burn out, uh, and second of all, the uh, January sort of drought of YouTube tends to st uh, sort of stick in where you don't really get the uh, the ad revenue, you don't really get the views because everyone sort of goes back to s uh, school and uni, everyone goes back to their jobs, uh, goes off leave, etc. from Christmas break. Uh, and of course, all the advertisers decide that they don't want to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars more than they need to because they get their new annual budget. So... As a YouTuber, it's not really worth working through January, but basically, as soon as the growth slows down, you can probably expect maybe two or three videos a week. For now, though, I sincerely appreciate every little bit of support. It really makes a difference, and it really... I'm just absolutely blown away. Speaking of blown away, we're going to blow away this F-80, because, of course, we have Hispano Mark Vs. 
Now, I think we have something like uh, 600, 600 odd rounds, uh, and the F80 wisely decides that he's going to dip back below me, and I'm going to continue in a straight line. Now, this F84G is going to head towards me, as well as the F80 there to my left, and I'm going to put the plane into a vertical to escape the F80A and to escape the F84G. If the F84G went into the vertical, uh, someone else on my team would have swept this guy up very, very quickly. So, smart move there from the F84. The F80 is not quite as clever uh, and is getting harassed there by the uh, ME262. And now he's gone up into a little bit of a vertical and put himself in a very precarious situation. Me being an absolute potato, I miss. Uh, I'm just going to blame it on the plane because, you know, I'm, I'm a perfect pilot, you know that. I never make any mistakes whatsoever, as you'll probably see, you know. All jokes aside. Uh, that F-80 is now in a pretty precarious situation. He's got to keep his speed. He can't go up into a vertical. I think he's realized that he's uh, messed up, and I shear his wing off with a very quick little burst. F-84G comes in, and I'm going to go again for some shots, and I miss. It is kind of difficult to aim with the Venom. I'm not used to it still. I don't really like Hispano cannons that are either wing-mounted or uh, mounted underneath the fuselage. I snap a flap because, like I said, I don't make any mistakes at all. Um, this F-84 here has basically gotten himself into a bit of a pickle. I'm going to crit him and I'm going to shear his wing off again. F-80A decides he wants to come in. He's not exactly looking for where I am. And I managed to get myself a third cheeky little kill. A2D is our next victim here and he's going to try and sit behind me. Now, I can actually outturn the A2D1 if I'm careful. If I have enough speed and if I have enough energy as well as enough altitude, you can see I am barely, barely keeping away from the A2D, so if you have the opportunity to, don't turn fight with an A2D1. But if you absolutely have to, you can just, if you are sort of clever enough and if you watch where you are putting your plane. This A2D was uh, one of the victims of my uh, teammate there in the 262, and um, if I, you know, if the 262 didn't get him, I would have had myself a wonderful little four-piece there. But that's kind of showing you what the uh, Sea Venom can do in a situation like that you do need your teammates with you because when you are solo you don't really have the opportunity to carry say a 3v1 or even a 2v1 is a little bit of a struggle but I'll tell you what a 2v2 or a 3v3 more than winnable for the sea venom especially at this battle rating it does have a decent amount of energy retention relative to the planes that it fights at this battle rating and so you can actually get a fair amount out of it notice there that the two nigels and the radar are all modeled very, very impressive, although note that the uh, radio operator there is sort of literally inside the shoulder of the pilot. So uh, I guess Nigel is getting a little bit too frisky there in the cabin of the Sea Venom. What if we, uh, um, what if we kissed in the, in the Sea Venom? <laughs> Just joking. Unless, hmm, flushed face. <laughs> oh, Nigel, stop getting frisky. That's... That's why the Sea Venom is a bad play, because Nigel keeps getting frisky with the pilot, and that, that's never going to end well. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, on to the next map here, and we are on uh, Stalingrad, or one of the Stalingrad maps, and I've noticed that there are a few enemies there at sort of my altitude. Now, you do want to be above or sort of at the uh, energy level of the planes that you are going to be fighting. Because remember, you can't just outturn someone all the time. You will eventually be uh, brought down to a speed where you just cannot cope. Uh, especially with this particular battle rating, you will every now and then face 6.7 propeller-driven aircraft, uh, like the F2G1, and uh, of course if you get a mixed battle, you'll come up against the Spitfire Mark 24. Now, you'll also be facing things that will outturn you at your sort of battle rating. Horton 229 is a good example that will outturn you, although if you are throwing and rolling and pulling at the same time, uh, the rudder of the Horton 229 will let it down. It, it has gotten a significant nerf since my last video. I have been trying to get footage for it slowly, but I haven't really had anything to sort of show off. Anyway, one of the other planes that you have to keep an eye out for, uh, apart from the SK-60, is the R2-Y2. The R2-Y2 actually does turn fairly well. Uh, I would sort of consider it an almost equivalent to uh, this plane. It is very, very close, uh, but the Sea Venom does actually edge out on top. Now, in this case here, have a look at the footage or the, or the gameplay behind, and you will see that uh, there are several enemies 
coming in and uh, looking like very juicy targets. I go for the F-84B, I miss. I'm going to continue for the F-84B that is uh, crossing over the river, but I decide instead to put my plane up into a vertical to conserve that energy because there are so many enemy planes around that I just need to do something about them all very, very quickly. The R2Y2 here, which like I said is close to an equivalent, but I would consider it ever so slightly worse than the Sea Venom, uh, has gone for the attacker, and I want to try and save the attacker if I can, so I'm going to spray a little bit, I managed to get a critical hit on uh, what looks like the elevator, which, I don't know, that's not really a crit to me, That that's uh, kind of just like a slap on the wrist to the R2-Y2, so I'm going to carry on forward, and there is a, uh, I think that's F-89D, looking juicy and uh, very, very nice, but unfortunately he cuts underneath me, and the F-80A is now presenting as a fairly... Uh, fairly sort of threatening target, but not as much as a threat as the R2-Y2 here. Notice here I'm going up into the vertical and I'm going to keep my wings at 90 degrees to his so that I can avoid uh, getting shot down basically by him. Now in this case here I've gone uh, parallel with his wings in order to get a kill shot, but knowing us uh, we sort of stall out at the same time. Now I'm going to pop my air brakes here and I'm going to move my flaps to take off just as I round this corner or combat rather, uh, and this is going to give me a little bit of an edge, it's going to stop me falling as quickly as he is, it's also going to stop me from ramming into him as I set him on fire, and once I do that, that's pretty much game over for the uh, R2-Y2 there, F-88A is next, and the F-88A cops a little bit of uh, pretty decent damage to, uh, I think it's the rudder, or, so, or to the empennage, uh, and the R2-Y2 finally goes down. F-80A here is looking very juicy once more being critted out like that uh, and I'm going to go and do a little bit of a spray. I'm not really good with these guns I have to admit. I'm, I'm really struggling to aim them uh, and it's probably now in retrospect to the due to the fact that they are a little bit further behind the, uh, the nose than I originally thought. I thought they were kind of close up on the nose but they're basically right underneath the pilot like they are on the, uh, on the regular Venom. So that's something that I have to get used to, and uh, you'll see in the video that I'm not particularly proficient with. So, R2-Y2 here decides he wants to go for a vertical, and a second R2-Y2 is joining the fray. This is really, really crazy, this, this sort of panning out of this particular match. Uh, the R2-Y2 that was about to pitch up for me there, he decided to uh, get critted. I think that looks like a flap, uh, you know, injury, some flap damage, if you will. Uh, and now this other R2-Y2 is coming in, I'm very, very desperately putting my takeoff flaps on and wiggling my wings just a little bit to throw off his aim so that he doesn't get a kill shot onto me. The Meteor here saves my bacon with that first R2-Y2 and now I see an F-84 heading straight towards me, which means that I need to put the nose straight down and either go for this R2-Y2 or hope that the F-84 doesn't get me and the F-84 is a lot slower than I thought it was, so I managed to set him on fire there, leaving me with 24 bullets and I get a hit on the R2-Y2, which results in absolutely nothing. So I have to speed away from this R2-Y2 because he's a very spooky boy indeed, but I end up baiting him perfectly for the Meteor, who snags another kill off my back. Beautiful teamwork there, and mad props to the Meteor for being such a good sport there. The Meteor was probably the MVP there because I sprayed a little bit too much and ran out of ammunition. That is one thing you have to be very, very careful of with the Sea Venom and with British uh, planes in general. You can't spray your Hispanos. I know they don't do a lot of damage, even though they should, but you can't really afford to spray. And that's the, that's the real crux of learning those early British jets and even the later ones. Things like the uh, Lightning F6, the Hunter F1, the Hunter F6, they all have very limited ammunition when it comes to their... Uh, sort of fire time or the, the amount of gun time or the amount of time that you can hold down the mouse button and a bullet will come out basically. Someone let me know what the proper word for that is. Um, I've butchered it like usual but the Sea Venom, when you learn it, when you show some discipline, the plane will actually treat you fairly well in a 7.7 .7 or even an 8.0, 7.0 type match. You will get a lot out of this plane. It has a fair amount of potential and the one thing that you basically can't come up against is anything with a lot of energy. Anything like the MiG-15, the MiG-15 BIS, absolutely shreds the hell out of the Sea Venom because it just does not keep up with the MiG-15. It's got too much acceleration for it to handle and you kind of need to just sort of pick up the scraps, if you will. 
Anyway, the next sort of engagement we're going to go for here is with this F-84. I saw some rockets. I'm heading towards the rockets, and it's an F-84. He hasn't noticed me at all. I don't know why. He's a little bit asleep at the wheel, if you will. Uh, and I just set him on fire. That looks like a fuel slash engine fire or an oil fire. That ain't going to go out, so basically very, very easy, straightforward kill. Now, in the kill feed, I do see that an F-80 has rocketed some artillery. Now... Uh, between you and me, I don't know why you would rocket artillery. You would normally rocket a pillbox or a tank. Uh, you would use your guns on the AA, but you know what? If uh, that's what you're going to do, I'm not really going to judge you for it. I go for a quick head-on here, like a sort of dodgy-ass last-minute head-on. Don't do these because they are ridiculously risky. Just just go for the normal play. Go for the vertical and uh, get out of the way. This F-80A, or this F-80, was just too horny for a kill. Just played the plane ridiculously poorly and got shot down as a result, leaving me with four very, very lovely kills in the Sea Venom. Now, I don't tend to get high kill matches in the Sea Venom, and I don't expect anyone to be getting anything more than two kills every match at the very, very most. If you walk away with a single kill and not dying in the Sea Venom, I would consider that a little bit of a victory because the plane itself, whilst being fairly decent, is nothing particularly special. You do need to show discipline, you do need to show a bit of care with that plane, and of course you can't just sort of go in and expect the world to uh, revolve around you. The Sea Venom is a fairly fun plane to fly, uh, and if you manage to spade it, if you sort of treat it with a bit of care, you will get extremely far, and it will be a lot of fun to play. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate the support. It means the world to me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.